Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I am in Luminar Neo and I'm taking a look at a landscape and kind of walking through a workflow, trying to create a landscape that's really going to pop. Um, I've got a shot that I took in Sedona, Arizona, five, six, seven years ago, something like that. And uh, I like the photo, but it needs a little bit of work, of course. So I'm going to walk through and share that. By the way, if you don't have Neo yet, there is a sale that starts today. I'll put a link down below and it goes until the end of the month. And there's various bundles you can get with Luminar AI or Aurora HDR, that sort of thing. So I won't go into the details here. I want to focus on the creation of this photograph, but there's a link down below if you want to check it out. Let's take a look at the photo. Here it is. Now, like I said, this was something in Sedona, late afternoon, a little bit of a sunset kind of feel to the image. I like the light hitting that, uh, well, whatever that's called. It's not a mountain, but I don't know what it's called. Anyway, the landscapes in the Southwest are always very interesting to me and beautiful. I am going to start with a 16 by 9 crop, and I think I'm going to do something about like that. So I want a fair amount of sky. I want a fair amount of foreground, but I don't want either one to dominate. So I've got that set up. I'm ready to go. And that's something I typically always do is start with the crop tool if I need it. And then I go straight to develop raw, which is where we are now. So I'm going to start with some increased smart contrast, which I love and loved in uh, Luminar AI. I'm going to pull down the highlights a little bit, but I am going to increase the shadows. So this for me is really just balancing the light. And I just think that looks really good already. I'm obviously going to do some additional creative things to it in order to kind of, um, you know, fix the photo, uh, for lack of a better word. I'm going to actually increase whites a little bit. I don't get into whites and blacks a whole lot uh, in my editing, but I'm, I did this time, and I'm actually going to increase the blacks as well. So something about like that. Again, I'm just creating better visibility across the landscape, and what I'll end up doing is somewhat kind of shaping the light, which is uh, something I love to do. So for the temperature, I am going to actually bump that up. I'm going to go about 5,600. That looks good, and I'm going to go a little bit more on tint because, again, it's a late afternoon, kind of prior to sunset. I want to create a little bit more of that feel, and so that's kind of how I typically go about it. I'm going to leave saturation alone, but I am going to give it a little bit of vibrance. I do like my vibrance. Typically, I like vibrance more so than I like saturation, but I would say already we've got a nice looking photo. If I show you the before, there it is, and the current state. So we're getting there. I've got more to do. I'm finished in the develop raw, and I'm going to pop over to structure AI. And I don't always do it this way, but in this case I am, which is I'm just going to apply that across the entire photo. So what I wanted to do is create a little bit more crunch in the foreground, right? I don't typically apply it to the sky, but in this case, I wanted to. It gives a little bit more texture to the clouds, and I like that. So there it is with it, and that's what it was before. So Structure AI can be useful in that uh, regard in terms of adding a little bit of um, mood, maybe is the word, for the sky. Anyway, that's what I wanted to do. However, it does create a little bit of crunch, and so I'm going to come in with luminosity, denoise, like uh, high 30s. Uh, 40 I think is fine and I'm gonna paint that in so going to paint mask and what I want to do is basically just paint that into the sky there's a little bit of noise there I'm gonna go ahead and remove it okay I've got a mask about like that I think I'm fine I'm gonna let that go and go ahead and close that tool now next up I'm gonna get into details and what I want to do here of course is add just a little bit more fine um, structure slash detail to the foreground area but not all of it. So once again, I'm going to get the mask. And once I'm in paint mask, I'll go ahead and increase that brush. And what I want to do is kind of target a few areas. I really want these, um, these kind of red rock uh, hills to pop. And some of this foreground, like this over here on the left, what I don't really care about is that big tree that's kind of out of focus and they're kind of in the center. I don't really care about that. I was mostly looking over it anyway at the distant hills. And while you can come in with a brush and be a little bit more accurate than I am in this video, which I do recommend doing, uh, I'm not really doing it here as I've kind of indicated. So uh, I just wanted to crunch up these things a little bit, but I don't want to add detail to that tree in the foreground. It's slightly out of focus because I was focused in the distance. That's fine with me. I don't want to take something that a, I don't really care about, so to speak. Uh, B, that's already out of focus. 
um, and C isn't really a huge component of the photo. I don't want to create more crunch around that. I want to kind of crunch up the other stuff. So in other words, I want to leave that kind of soft and I want your eye to not really spend any time dwelling on it. Whereas if you were to uh, things that are brighter, more detailed, more colorful, they tend to draw the eye. So that's what I'm talking about there. Okay, now I'm going to go into one of the new tools, which is Relight AI. I love this tool. And what I want to do is I'm going to pull the near, which is going to be more of a foreground light. I'm going to pull that down and far. I'm going to go up at about 25, but I need to set the depth. And in this case, the depth is going to go all the way to 100. So I love that because it really allows me to kind of move the light through the photo. And if you look at the before and after, there it is before slightly darker in the sky, a little bit brighter in the foreground, and now a little bit different. I'm trying to basically darken the foreground a little bit, and I could bring down the brightness near even a little bit more perhaps, but I'm basically darkening that and creating a little bit more light in the distance, which to me kind of visually and kind of mentally makes sense because it's sunlight hitting those distant peaks. I want them to be brighter than the foreground. And also, once again, as I said a moment ago, your eye is typically drawn to the stuff that's brighter. I don't want you to spend too much time in the foreground other than something that, you know, perhaps is not really leading. So there's not really a lot of leading lines here, but kind of leading your eye to the brighter stuff in the distance. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to go into one of my favorite tools in Color Harmony, and I'm going to start with Split Color Warmth. And what I want to do here is I'm going to add a little bit of warmth, so like a 10 or 12. I don't want to overdo it, but if you've been there, you know that those red earth tones are really vibrant. Uh, I am going to take the cool colors and make them a little bit cooler. So it's a little bit of a play there between the warmth and the cool. I like that kind of interplay in my photos, kind of regardless of what the subject matter is. In this case, landscape, but I like that cool and warm kind of balancing each other out. And then in color balance, I'm going to go into the highlights and I'm going to take the yellow blue to positive uh, like 10, 12, 15, something like that. So basically what I'm doing is the yellow blue colors that are in the highlights, I'm making them more blue. So in other words, I'm kind of taking the sunset look in the sky and making it a little bit cooler. But again, that's the interplay of the cool and the warm that I'm talking about. So overall color harmony has taken the photo from that to that a little bit richer color, a little bit cooler in the sky, that sort of thing. I love co color harmony. It's fantastic. There's so many great tools here. Color balance. If you've heard me uh, in the past talk about it, you know, I love it. It just comes in really handy. And even for these minor things like that, I think it really has a big impact on color and the mood of the photograph. One more time. There it is before and there it is now. And the last thing I'm going to do to this one is just go into saturation vibrance and I'm going to pull them down both slightly, just like a negative four, something like that. I don't want to overdo it. These colors out there are pretty saturated and intense. I just think you got to be careful. And with my moves, when you adjust contrast, it pops colors. When you move light around, which is also adjusting contrast, that can pop colors. I did some stuff in color balance. I think you just have to be careful that you don't overdo it. So. Just to be safe, for lack of a better word, I went back and took saturation and vibrance down just a smidge simply because I don't want to overdo it. But if you look at the photo now, let me do the before and after. There's my before that doesn't include the crop, which you may recall was, um, you know, obviously not 16 by 9, but there it is before. You know, sky is obviously brighter. That's the source of light. Makes sense. The foreground's too dark. That's okay. It's easy to fix. And what I've done is basically brightened and popped the entire landscape adjusted the light, adjusted some color. I just wanted to make a landscape that's really impactful and kind of just go boom. And I think I've achieved that there. That's how I'm working through things here so far in Luminar Neo. Now keep in mind, it's not out yet, of course. This is still kind of the beta, if you will. And as a result, it doesn't have all the tools. I might would do some additional things when I get the rest of the tools. We'll see how it goes. It's coming soon and I'll be making a lot of videos about it. But that's it. This is a landscape you know, impactful, kind of boom, kind of landscape, bright, colorful, detailed, that sort of thing. Hope it gives you some ideas about how I'm using Luminar Neo. I'll be back soon with more videos about it. Thanks for watching, my friends. I appreciate it. Until next time, take care of yourselves and adios.